Hello, I'm the Crafty Ginger. Today I'm going to show you how to do some tub dyeing, basic tub dyeing. Um, we're doing two different colors. This one's called Daffodil and this one's called Peony. And I like how these turned out, but they're just really vibrant. So I'm going to add a little bit more water, a little less um, dye, just using less dye, um, so that we can get sort of like a, just a sunnier, lighter yellow and a sunnier, or like a lighter pink on this. So I'm also going to do some dyeing on these plant hangers that I have ready. So um, I'll show you how to do that as well. So for your supplies, you're going to need um, a couple of tubs. You want something that's not gonna react with the dye. And then you need some apparatus for hanging your plant hangers if you're doing a dip dye. Um, if you're just doing rope dyeing, then you don't need that. And I have some rope here that I'm gonna just um, go ahead and show you how I do it. So the first thing that you wanna do, let, let's talk about supplies first actually. So I have two tubs here. I have two pairs of tongs. I have two mixing spoons. Um, I have these two measuring cups right here, which are for just measuring water and mixing your um, dye together. I have, um, this is the dyer salt. This is calcelene oil. I have my two powder dye. These are Procyon fiber reactive dyes in peony and daffodil, as I said. Um, and I have some gloves. You probably want gloves just because otherwise it'll dye your hands. I try to mostly use the tongs to move things around because I don't wanna dye my hands. I've had that happen a couple of times. And then the last thing you need in step two is the um, soda ash fixer. fixer. You can buy all these supplies from um, Dharma Trading and you also need some um, measuring cups and spoons. So I got these from the dollar store. I got these from just like a kitchen store. These are just things from my kitchen. You know, most of the stuff you can kind of just find. You don't need special supplies. So step one is to fill up your tubs. I have 12 quarts of warm water in both of these. And like I said, I'm doing a little more water this time because I want my dye to come out a little bit lighter. So what you're gonna do is put your rope in there this rope here is from Naughton Rope, both of these um, twisted ropes. This here, some of my favorite rope from Nairoma Studio, which is this lightly twisted. I'm gonna dye that too, because I haven't dyed any yet. I only have um, the natural color and the black that they, they make it in black, but I wanna dye it and see how it turns out. So I haven't tried that yet. Okay, now in each of these, I have about um, one cup of warmer water. What I'm going to do is dissolve the dye in there. So I'm going to take, kind of depends, this is sort of like trial and error. So I can't tell you exactly like what to do for your colors. You're just going to have to kind of wing it um, until you sort of figure out what color you want. So I'm going to do half a tablespoon. And what you're doing is dissolving it in here so that, um, and I'm going to use a different one because I don't want to contaminate my dyes. So I'm going to use a different tablespoon altogether for the yellow. So you put it in the warm water and you're kind of just like dissolving it so that um, you don't put it in the dye vat and have it not be dissolved. So I have one spoon for one color and another for the other color because so you don't want to contaminate these. So you're just kind of mixing it together like a cooking roux. You can find all these directions on Dharma Trading if you look under their techniques and then this is just tub dyeing, basic tub dyeing. Okay, now I'm going to um, put my plant hangers, I want these to be dyed all the way up to the knot so I'm just gonna let those soak too. Let's do two, this is gonna be the yellow and this is gonna be the peony or daffodil and peony. I'm just soaking it up to the gathering knot on these because I just want like part of it dyed. So all we're trying to do here is just saturate the rope a little bit so it dyes more evenly. So just kind of press it down. You don't need to really do much. Just kind of absorbing the water basically. Okay, now I'm going to put the dyer salt and oil so I'm going to do a half a cup of the dyer's salt and a teaspoon of calcelene oil. 
for each one. Let's quarter. Calcine oil is optional, but when you're dip dyeing something like we're going to do with the plant hangers, it's good to have it um, because it's supposed to break the tension of the water. So I'm assuming that just helps it re absorb when you're dip dyeing. So that's one teaspoon in each that we're doing there. Stir those. Okay, now I'm going to take these out just briefly. I have two other tubs over here that I'm just kind of using for staging. But I'm just gonna put these in while I mix it because I don't want my items in here while I mix it. Okay. Here's the peony. Oh, gorgeous. Super pretty color, okay. Make sure you get all the dregs of the, whatever's kind of left in the bottom there. Really stir it. Okay. You can see that this makes a mess, which is why I'm on my deck. Because otherwise you kind of, I normally do this in my garage if it's cold outside, but you kind of want to just find a place where you don't really get everything dyed. <laughs> You don't want to dye your laundry room. Oops. Okay. Pour the daffodil in. And this is going to change colors once you put in step the next step with the soda ash fixer. It always changes a little bit. So Kind of just have to play with it to get the right colors. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is lower down my table so I can use it to dip dye these plant hangers. Okay, I dropped the table down here, so this is kind of helpful to have something that's like a little bit lower. I dropped it down so that I can get this rack above it. What I'm gonna do now is just drape in here. And then you kind of use the tongs to like agitate it because you want it to absorb so you're gonna let this sit in here for about 10 minutes okay now let's do the peony color I'm trying to just get up to that knot so let's see if we can kind of control that it differently okay so just kind of use your tongs to agitate it a little bit Nairoma studio rope looks really noodly. <laughs> if you feel like it's not getting dark enough, um, you can always add more dye. I'm gonna let this sit for just a few and see if this is giving me kind of the result that I want. But just gently shake them. I usually just like go back and forth between shaking them. And I'm trying to get an ombre effect on the plant hangers. So I'm gonna see if I can do that. Mostly I've just um, dipped them one color, but what I'm gonna do is raise up this rolling rack here 
in a few minutes so that I can get different levels of color. So we're gonna start with like the lightest yellow and then we'll move it up, let it sit there for a while and then move it up so then the, the bottom is the darkest. So I'm gonna experiment with that. I really like how this yellow looks so far. It's very sunny yellow. And I do like the peony too. It, do, it always looks like it's not absorbing very well, but um, once you put the soda ash fixer, it'll make a difference. So I also wanted to mention that your rope will shrink up in length. So just to experiment with, with how much it shrinks up, what I did was I measured each of these at 10 body lengths. So this bundle is 10, this bundle is 10, and so is this one. So I did that so I can see how much they shrink up. This is 1 8 inch rope, and then um, this is the 8 millimeter by Nyroma Studio. And then this one here is the 3 16 from Knot and Rope. So we'll see how much they expand. Um, when you bundle your rope, whatever you use to tie it, you want to make it a little bit loose because your rope's going to expand just because you're getting it wet, of course. So we're going to agitate this for the next probably 10 minutes or so. And then when we come back, we'll do the next step, which is adding um, the soda ash to it. And then we're going to rinse it a couple of times because um, these plant hangers we're not going to put in the in the washer normally i put the rope bundles in the washer and let them rinse from that because it gets them really really nice so when you're working with it it doesn't dye your hands um, but these plant hangers are already finished and we can't really stick those in the washer so the other thing i forgot to mention is when your bundles are finished you can put them in these pillowcases these are just used pillowcases that i had so put your bundles in there and then tie the top of it and put it in the washer and let it rinse a couple of times um, you can see that it, these are very colored from doing that a couple of times. So let's wait about 10 minutes and I'll come back and show you the next step. Okay, so these have been sitting in here for about 15, 20 minutes now. And I have another um, one cup of the hottest water that I can get out of the tap in each of these. So make sure you don't contaminate your colors. You can see this one is turning yellow because this is what we mixed the yellow one and this is the pink one. So just don't contaminate. You don't want to have cross dyeing. So now I'm going to mix in the soda ash. We're going to do two tablespoons soda ash. Let's see. And the water is just for mixing it in there. Because um, you don't want to put the soda ash directly into the dye vat. It can cause the dye vat to be kind of like splotchy. Okay. And then these other two tubs that I told you I had for like staging, I'm going to put those down below here because what I'm going to do is use these to rinse. And also for right now, I'm just going to take these out while I stir in the soda ash because I don't want to get splotchy results. So I'm just going to take those out. So stir that in into just the dye vat that you had going already. And this is gonna fix the dye. This is called soda ash fixer. So this fixes the dye so it doesn't run everywhere when you finish, but you just wanna make sure it's well mixed. Okay, now, up your ropes put them in here I think I maybe should have done a little bit more dye in this peony color it's not quite as vibrant as I wanted but um, that's kind of you know these dye lots they just turn out differently depending on how much you put in there so that's kind of the fun part a little bit aggravating sometimes because you're not going to get the same exact results every time unless you measure it out exactly I 
I really like the yellow though. The yellow is like gorgeous. Perfectly sunny, just how I wanted it. Okay. And then again, you're just gonna agitate these for about, let's say like 15 minutes with this. See, I really wish this were a little bit darker. This is more like super light pink. It's still pretty. It's just not that deep, rich peony color like I had here. This is the same color. I just used a lot more dye in this lot. So let's wait about 15 minutes. I'll come back and show you how to rinse them. And then you're just gonna hang them out to dry. Um, it's really hot here today, so mine should dry pretty quickly. I'm going to put the ropes into the washing machine and then the plant hangers I'll just let stand outside and dry off on their own. Okay, so we've had it in the soda ash fixer um, for about 20 minutes now, 15, 20 minutes. And now we're gonna rinse it. So um, just pick it up with the tongs and then this is just cold water and then just kind of gently agitate it. So this peony color, it's not quite as dark as I wanted. This is more of like a rose quartz color, but I don't mind it. You can see this is the same color here. So I used a lot of dye in this one. This is very concentrated, but this also wasn't the color I was really going for. So this is actually kind of a gorgeous color for making like a, a something for a little baby's room or something like that. I'm not in love with how it turned out on this plant hanger. It just looks like a little bit dingy, but let's see if we, once we rinse it, if it kind of turns out for us. So just put your yellow in the rinse fat. And um, the rope bundles, I'm also going to rinse in the washing machine after I put them in the pillowcases. But these plant hangers, since they're already done, um, I'm just gonna rinse them like this because I don't wanna put the metal ring in the washing machine. I'm afraid it might ruin the knots and yeah, I don't think that would be good. So you can see here, I was, I was going for that like ombre look. So it turned out, I think with a more vibrant color it'd be even more pronounced, but you can see like up here is like more of a pale yellow and then it got like more medium yellow and then down here at the ends, it's definitely more that daffodil color. So that's what I was kind of going for. And this one, it's not quite as nice as I wanted. I think again, just because of the color not being so vibrant. So I would try this one again. You can always re-dye it. If this isn't the color you're going for, just go back to the first part where you put the dye, um, the first step with the dye and the um, dyer salt and the calcine oil um, and just use more dye. So you can always re-dye if this isn't what you're going for. But I'm obsessed with how this turned out. This is really, really pretty. So um, I'm just gonna go ahead and put the rope bundles in the pillowcases and wash those. Thank you for watching this video. And um, if you would like to see where I got all of my supplies, you can check the video description below. I got all the dye supplies from dharmatrading.com. I got rope from um, Niroma Studio on Etsy and also Amazon and notinrope.com. And then the plant hangers that you see here are also part of my plant hanger series. So you can check those out if you don't have a finished product that you wanna dip dye yet. And that's it. Thank you so much for watching. I'll be posting this on Instagram. Tag me in your photos and so I can share them and people can see what you're working on. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.